Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today's project is making an arbor uh, for a buffing pad. Now, you buy the arbors and stuff, but you know what? If you can make it, why not? Right? Saves a lot of money. And you get to have some, some fun doing it. Anyways, I've had this buffing pad for quite a while, and uh, I've never gotten around to making an arbor for it, and I thought, you know, I'd make a great video and uh, show you guys how to do it. Especially for guys that are new into machining and you want some projects to do, here's a project for you. So what we've done here is we've got some three quarter inch round bars, just regular mild steel, cheap stuff. It's all you need. You know, you're not running this at 60,000 RPM, uh, you know, but you can run her up around 3,000 without any uh, difficulties, I'm sure. Uh, we will find that out for sure though, you know. Um, but I've run these things um, anywhere up to 2,000, 2,500 RPM, so it's not a huge deal anyhow. But um, anyway, three quarter inch. Now what you've got to choose to, uh, when you're doing this, um, you could do this and just take the diameter of this part in here, which definitely saves you a backing uh, washer, but you're still going to need a front washer either way. Um, but for, just to get an idea how big this is going to be, you're looking at uh, 1.2 inches um, for the diameter of this inner circle here, okay? You're going to need a bolt that's going to fit in the hole uh, reasonably well uh, without too much play, you know, because you want to make sure everything gets centered nice. Now, because I'm using 3 quarter inch, I'm actually going to use uh, backing washers on the front and the back um, just to keep that area nice and rigid, which is also going to prevent it from tearing off on me too. Because without the washers, it's, it can tear off and you should actually go with a washer diameter of this size for maximum secure hold and best results for when this thing starts to fan out when you're buffing. So um, what we're going to do with this is we're going to take about 30 thousandths off the diameter of this bar and then we're going to uh, do our parting cut. Then we're going to put the piece back into the chuck so it runs truer, right? Because bar is never perfectly round to begin with. Um, then we're going to drill and tap our hole for our threaded uh, bolt that's going to go in. And uh, the bolt I've chosen for this is actually a fine thread and it's a metric. And it's actually a, uh, an M6 uh, by 1. So your tap drill size for that is going to be a 1360 force. You know, that's if you're going to go with this bolt size. Um, so anyways, let's uh, do first part here. And now because there's a lot of stick out on this and we're not using a live or dead center, um, I'm only going to take 10 thou at a time off the diameter. So 5 on the dial, which is 10 off your diameter. And we're going to do this at 350 RPM. Also mention that after we take the 30 thou off the diameter and do the parting cut and we do our tap and our uh, thread there our thread um, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna turn down a section of this 
to 5 8 so that it'll fit into uh, a 5 8 chuck on a drill press and um, then everything's going to get you know cleaned up really nice and uh, then we'll put our backing washers on and our muffing pad and fire it up so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do my next couple of passes and then we'll come back to the next stage and do that I'll do the parting cut and you know just so this video doesn't go like excessively long here right so uh, I'll be right back fairly decent finish on there. Um, I'm not going to take any sandpaper to this right now. Um, probably won't even take any sandpaper to it at all because once you get a piece concentric you don't want to disrupt that. And some, If you push too hard on the sandpaper while you're moving back and forth you can actually dig grooves in and we don't want to do that. So we've done two pass, two finishing passes. We've cleaned off all the dust area. Now what we want to do is our parting cut which we're going to want to do that at about 115 RPM. If your machine can go slower, then do it slower, because steel is uh, one type of material that is a real uh, touch and go thing when it comes to parting. Um, if you have a knack for parting, like I've got a pretty good knack for it, then uh, you'll be all right. Um, but if you don't have a knack for it, take it slow. Now I'm going to get as close as I can to the chuck, and you always should when you're doing parting cuts. You don't want to be touching the chuck at all with your, your tool or its holder. So I usually go within about 16th to an eighth of an inch roughly. Now this is going to be a longer piece, um, but we still got to turn down the shank area too uh, for the 5 eighths diameter. And uh, we got to drill and tap. So uh, let's do our parting cut here. Now this you're going to need some cutting fluid for.
a little bit. cut off now. So now we're going to have to clean up the chuck before we release the other part of this so we don't get too much in there. Make sure your jaws are really clean and free of debris, especially after doing parting cuts because all kinds of junk can get in there. Okay, so we're all good. So we'll wipe down our piece here. Now, we're going to put it in on the end that was cut off because we're going to need to face this in. We also got to take the burr edge out because anytime you do a parting cut, um, you create a, an outer edge here. And you want to get rid of that. So we'll uh, change the cutter. I'm going to do it 550. Now, I'm going to take my speed to 1620 and I'm going to get rid of that egg clip. to center drill our hole so that we can do our tapping next. So I'm just going to stop the video for a second and I'll be right back. Okay, well, let's uh, do our center drill on this and uh, then we can drill the uh, tap hole and put some threads in it. the bolt I'm using, which is a fair length, just to uh, give you some idea here. Okay, that's about half of the length of the drill. I'm actually going to take this hole and I'm going to drill it um, 
a little bit past there. So I'm going to go to the second last flute on the edge and that'll give me lots of room for any debris that goes inside when I'm cutting the threads but at the same time it's going to give me that extra space because there's also the pointy part of the, the tap that doesn't do anything. You need space for it too at the end uh, so your bolt can thread all the way in. So uh, let's uh, get this hole drilled. tap assist uh, tool that I had made a while back and I have different end pieces that go on this and it's spring loaded okay so you'll see how that works but this is going to ensure a proper uh, 90 degree surface for the tap so that it sits even and you get a proper set of threads so you, you're not going to cross thread anything or have any of that sort of problem happen so what I like to do with this um, so I'll push it in first initially, make sure everything's sitting good and even, and then I'll lock it down. Now 
Now, what I got to do is get a little wrench in there. Find one that fits. to uh, put an adjustable on here, which is still good. Now I'm sure you've noticed I started doing this dry without any cutting fluid. I only do that for the first couple of threads to get it started. Okay. Now that's started in, I can back this out. And the next thing I want to do is grab my T-handle. Now we're going to back this out. And we're now going to switch the lathe truck speed down to 115 rpm. This is going to make it very difficult for the chuck to turn and if I have to I can put my chuck key in the chuck and completely stop it. So now we're going to put some cutting oil on our top. Now you only want to go a couple of turns and then back it off. This is going to stop you from actually ripping threads because you can actually tear your own good threads out. Okay, so we've got over half of this threaded now which is what we want to do. And now we're going to take it out of the chuck. And we're going to bring it over the device over here. And we're going to put a set of V-blocks on. So I'll show you this how it's set up in a second. idea of these V-blocks is one, it's going to stop you from slipping. And it's also going to stop it from marring up the uh, finish on my, my metal here. So, that's still got a few threads to go, so we'll put some oil in there. Very important to use the cutting oil. It's not just to act as a lubricant, uh, but even when you're doing your, your drilling, it helps get the shavings out of there a lot easier and prevents overheating. Again, a couple turns, back it off.
Okay, so now we're at the end. Now we want to see how close our little guesstimate measurement was. So you want to knock out any metal that might still be in there. I'm not going to clamp this down hard, but so we're out a little bit, which is fine. So we're going to, in this case, we're going to cut the bolt down in size a little bit on its length because we don't need all this length anyhow. So what we'll do is we'll basically chop off maybe about a third of that bolt because it's still going to have good clamping force when it goes down. This is why it's important to measure and uh, make sure you got it. But you're not always going to have a perfect run at it, that's for sure. So you're going to have to uh, either compensate. In this case, I'm going to just cut it. Because once it's threaded, it's too late to redrill. Um, and you don't want to mess up the threads trying. But... Um, you also don't need all this length anyway in, in this particular bolt. So we got to cut about a third of that off. Uh, plus, so whatever you see showing here, you've got to cut that. Uh, plus an extra, say, eighth of an inch. Just to give you that little bit of extra squash room. So, back to the lathe we go. Part of the nice thing about making your own custom stuff, too, if you make a little mistake like this, you can fix it real easy. Now, you see I'm putting this bolt into the chuck. I'm going to show you a real fast, easy way you can actually do a cut. Now you can choose to cut this flat. I'm just going to cho choose to cut it on a bit of an angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this as close as I can and back just a hair. A burr on there just breaks right off. Got a nice point on there, which is cool. So now we can put it back together. Threads ready. Right Voila. Okay. So we'll stop the video for a minute, and I'll get this thing remounted, and we'll start turning down our diameter for the five eighths, and we'll just keep going. So I'll be right back. Okay, so what we've done here is we've we've marked out our location. I've taken 10 thou off. Uh, my location is the amount that I want this way from here to making an edge. So when it goes into the chuck, uh, the chuck depth on this thing. The total chuck depth it's actually past that, so I don't want all that into the chuck. So I want to go to about here, okay? Still gives lots of meat inside, 
Now the diameter we're going to here is actually point um, six one nine five. Um, five eighths is actually point uh, six two five zero. So we're only going to go down just a little bit below the five eighths. This is going to take quite a few passes, but we'll run a few anyway for you here, and then we'll stop the video and come back. Okay, so as soon as we get down to that diameter, we'll come back for the finishing passes and do the rest of the finish up and assemble it and uh, show you how it works. Hey guys, all right, welcome back. So we're down to uh, now just doing our last uh, two finishing passes, final measurement, and then uh, we'll put this uh, thing together and fire it up and see how she runs. And again, we're doing our finishing passes here at 550 RPM.
now we can just move this out a bit and uh, clean up all the little dust bunny little shavings of metal there and uh, we'll get this edge taken down and the back edge Okay, so we'll just zoom out here a little. There we go. Okay, so our main arbor is completed. Now the next thing we gotta do is get this uh, buffer pad on here. Now, if you don't have the metal to make um, that actual size that I was telling you about, you can actually use a large washer but then you're also going to have to use a smaller washer that your bolt will fit into. And uh, it's going to be a little tricky to pop this together, but um, what we've got here is large washer here, then your small washer. That goes right inside and it fits this perfectly, which is great. Then we want to take larger washer here that it fits a little loose here but that's okay we're not gonna have a problem then we take this next size washer up from here because it's got to be able to go over top of this one okay then we take the smaller washer that fits inside that keeps everything balanced nicely then we pop that through like so this into the chuck for a minute. Now you want to put a wrench on here that's going to fit this nut exactly or even a ratchet but we're going to use a wrench for this. And we're looking at a 10 mil. squash this down tight because you don't want it flying apart on you. Now if you cut your threads properly with everything else you should not have a problem getting a good amount of pressure behind this. And that should be good. So just to spin it up on the lathe here first. gives us a stopping point and we're not going to put things in too too far so we have that stopping point there for a reason now we want to make sure that this is secured really tight in the chuck so always tighten down all three and uh, we're going to go ahead and just throw this right up to 3000 rpm right away 
So if something's going to go wrong, you're going to see it go wrong on video. Okay, very bottom, very top. Now the other nice advantage to this is with a drill press you get those multi speeds, eh? Where a regular buffing machine you, you usually wouldn't unless it's a really expensive one. Um, but with a drill press you're going to get access to a lot of different uh, speeds for, for buffing purposes. So you'll actually find um, actually where a sweet spot is for buffing uh, with different types of buffers. Because I have this type here which we just put together. And then uh, I also, I'm sure you, if you've seen other videos, I've also got this style here that goes into the chuck as well. And uh, I've got other shapes of these, but these get reshaped when you start using them a lot, eh? But uh, so they all got different purposes for what I use. But um, I figure, you know, why, why put something to waste if you can make it work? So. You know, that works good. Everything runs nice and true. And uh, we'll have the arbor for years and we can just keep replacing these. And we can also get larger ones too to go onto the same arbor. So you're not restricted to just the one size here. So uh, anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.